It's the National Football League on EA Sports. And today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Washington Commanders and the New York Jets. All that and more coming up next. Take the Lincoln Tunnel through Weehawken, through Secaucus, across the Hackensack River, and you'll arrive as we have at MetLife Stadium in East Rutherford, New Jersey. Coming up, we've got a good matchup on tap between the Washington Commanders and the New York Jets. Welcome in, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gauden, and Charles, so much gets made about offensive comparisons. Here's a matchup where the defenses may just take center stage. Yeah, we're usually talking about guys scoring touchdowns. How about the guys who prevent them and change the momentum of the game when they take the ball away? I love those ball hawks in the secondary. People after my own heart. Here's the punter, Braden Mann, set to do the honors, and we are underway at MetLife Stadium. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And no chance to get away as they'll get him down at about the 17-yard line. So out comes the Washington offense onto the field. Leading the charge under center will be their six foot five quarterback, Carson Wentz. And when you look at him, you see that he's got all the tools you want in a quarterback. The big frame, the quick release, strong arm, has escape ability. The issue sometimes, tries to do too much instead of just taking the throws that are available to him. And occasionally turnovers get him into trouble. Wentz to throw on the first play from scrimmage. In trouble here, and down he goes. Back at the eight-yard line. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Didn't have the greatest field position to start, did they? And now, after this sack, it's way, way worse. And right off the bat, first play of the game. So a tough early challenge here, second and long after the sack. Another try after the first down sack. Wentz, this one complete to Curtis Samuel. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Now Wentz on third down. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. How about some applause for the defense there? They forced him to throw that one into coverage, and just like that, they're staring at a fourth down. Well done. So on fourth down, Washington going to call on Tress Way to punt it away. The Jets have Braxton Berrios back deep. 
And a fair catch taken back near about the 35, 36 yard line. So now here comes the Jet offense as they get ready to take over. They'll be led out by their quarterback who played his college ball at Western Kentucky. He was a hilltopper. It's Mike White. And there's a word that constantly gets thrown around with this guy when you talk to anyone in the building. Potential. They are sky high on what they believe he can grow into in the role of a starting quarterback. In addition, there are plenty around the league who think that as well. And years from now, he can still be leading this offense out. Good starting position for the Jets as they come up first and 10 at their own 37. They'll start on the ground. Hall, and he's swallowed up right near the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Now White. And he overshot him there. It's out of bounds, incomplete. Well, they certainly came out firing in this one, and while that one was incomplete, I can't imagine that'll be the last shot that they take in this game. An incomplete pass on second down. That muddles things a little bit here. This is third and ten. Out of the gun, it's White. He's going to look deep for more. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. One thing that offensive guys stress when they throw the deep ball, you're just counting on your receiver to find it, adjust before the defensive back can get his head around. In this case, though, the DB matched it move for move and knocked it away. On fourth down, punt coming from Braden Mann. We'll call that a 41-yard punt. The net a little greater, though, following a loss on the return. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. To throw, it's Wentz. That's complete. Terry McLaurin with it. And he works it across the 25 before being tackled. They went three and out on their first drive. Things already looking better here, first and 10. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. On first and 10, here's Wentz. Throwing it Terry McLaurin's way again, and he's got it. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. 13 yards as they've got the connection working. His second catch in a row, first down. I like that one, partner. They go back-to-back -back with excellent gains, and really it shouldn't be a surprise who they were throwing the ball to. He's their best guy. Yeah, we knew that they would get him involved early. They're doubling down on getting him involved early. Don't be surprised if they'll come right back to him again. They haven't shown the propensity to be able to stop him. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Straight ahead, Gibson. And he'll get this up past the 45 to the 47. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. The last run got six, now second and four. Now Wentz. He'll get this into the hands of Antonio Gibson. And that's going to be another first down as the tackle made at the Jets' 38-yard line. 
A solid gain of 15 yards in the sticks move. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. So in jet territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 38. A give up the middle to Gibson. And he's going to be hemmed in and brought down right at the line of scrimmage. Tackle on that play by Quinn and Williams. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to swallow up the ball carrier. Looking to throw on second down. Wentz. Middle of the field, he's got McLaurin. And he's going to get this down near the 25. That's the third time on this drive that these two have connected with each other. They've got a real rapport going. And right now, it's paying off with big chunks of yardage, as shown by that last play. First and ten, it's Gibson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. What an advantage having a lead guy to build a defensive line because not only does he take up the space and let the linebackers run free, but he can also make plays himself, as we just saw there. Ball at the 23, second and eight. Throwing now is Wentz. Throw right side, taken in by Gibson. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it could turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. Wentz going to try and throw on third. Dance into his... And he can't get rid of it. He's taken down. The former third overall pick, Quinn Williams there to bring him down. So not only do you not get the first down, but you've also made things a lot more difficult on your field goal kicker. Yeah, they're still in range, but you're exactly right because you know the kicker's over there saying, thanks a lot, you just made my job a little tougher because when he kicks it now, he'll kick it lower because he's got to get more distance. That means there's more jeopardy for the ball to get tipped or blocked. Wentz to the sideline on fourth down. Joey Sly is out there now for the Washington field goal. It'll be a 49-yard attempt from the left hash. Sly able to put this one through. And the Commanders get out to a 3-0 lead. So after drive number three here, we have a score, and it's three points after the field goal. I would say the feeling out process for both these teams, I'd say it's over, partner. Everyone understands what's going on now. You've kind of probed a little bit. Now you want to start throwing the big shots. First three points up on the board could be significant. After the made field goal, here's Sly to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Back on the field come the New York Jets for their second drive. And a three and out on that first drive. We'll see if they can do better here. They should have a better opportunity because the nerves should be settled now. That first series, everybody goes out a little extra emotion. So now they get a chance to go back out and say, okay, now we're into the game. Let's go play and play as best we can. You almost get a mulligan then on that first drive. Sometimes it absolutely serves out that way. You get a second opportunity, nothing big happened, but then again, you didn't commit any mistakes either. Off you go. And he will lose yardage here back at the 23-yard line. Two yards the loss, second and 12. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef, 
that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. To throw, White. And this one taken in on the right sideline, but not in the field of play. They say it's incomplete. The throw led him a little too far. It brings up third down. I think he could have scanned downfield forever, but there wasn't anything available. Ends up throwing an incompletion, and I think he'll take that. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. White looks to throw. And it's knocked away and incomplete. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. And it looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. Now the Jets send on Braden Mann to punt. And a fair catch called for and made just inside the 35-yard line. It'll be a 39-yard punt, no return. And the Commanders will take over with a first and 10. Wentz bringing the Commanders out for first and 10 at the 34. They'll start on the ground with Gibson. To the 40 and no further. The razzle-dazzle, though, got him a couple extra on the play. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. If you're in the offensive huddle, you're smiling after that play because you've certainly got them guessing now. Second and short. Could they just hand it off for another big gain, or did they take advantage of this spot to take a big shot downfield? From the 40 now on second down, Wentz. Wentz finding McLaurin there for the Commanders first. Many teams, as soon as they spot man defense, if they haven't called a hitch, they'll get to it as fast as they can. They want to put the ball in the hands of one of their best playmakers and hope that he can break a tackle on the outside and go for big yardage. Throwing on first is Wentz. And yet again, it's McLaurin. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. Well, this is where reading defenses and practice time comes into play. You've got to know what you're running versus zone versus man and how to run the proper route. And they just executed that one pretty well. First down, Wentz. This to McLaurin out on the left side. And they'll be stopped at the 28 on a play that started at the 14. They pick up 14. I don't care who you put on him, he's going to be a handful in one-on-one -on -one throws. Yeah, right now, you're right. They're in man-to-man, -man, maybe need some safety help. I would say that'd be a good idea. Double-team him somehow. I'm going to have to make someone else beat me rather than let him shred my defense. Wentz now on first down. Flushed out right. Under pressure, and he will go down. Save back at the 38. Clinton Williams now two sacks for him already here in this first quarter of play.
Washington with a football here to begin quarter number two. Sacks a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. And they will only muster a yard here at the 38. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try to keep the defense honest. You mean, or also just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. Seventh play of this drive coming up, but a long way to go on third down. To throw is Wentz. And that will be incomplete. I know we spent a lot of time talking about how the defensive backs read routes and, and make plays on the football. How about a good linebacker feeling the route, seeing the quarterback, jumps the play, and knocks it away. Really well done. So coming on now is the field goal unit. They're going to try for three, and he'll need all the leg he's got here. And he has got it from 55 yards away. That was never in doubt. And they're able to double their lead in this first half. It's six to nothing. So they're able to end that drive with three points in this one possession ball game. And ideally, you want to end every drive with points. Most quarterbacks, you tell you, let's end it with a kick, right? A PAT, that's number one. Field goal, you'll take. Punts, you really don't want to do that. In this case, they'll take the field goal and get prepared for the rest of the game. After the made field goal, here's Sly to kick this one away. Braxton Berrios now from his end zone. And he's able to get this across the 20, but not by much as he's marked down officially at the 21. The New York set to take the field. They've shown precious little here offensively thus far as they try again with a first down now. start the drive and he'll run straight into a wall of tacklers at the line of scrimmage it's second down and as a defensive end getting off the ball quickly swarming to the football making a tackle that's what we saw right there yeah that's what their job is and really a lot of the time they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends are like in a sprinter stance they're just headed straight for the quarterback that was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain and he's brought down at the 24 after a gain of four. If you're a football guy, that's a pretty run because everyone is in sync right there. Obviously, a guy carrying the ball, but how about the people up front? Leverage, athleticism, they created some nice space for him. An extra man here in the secondary for Washington on third down. Here's White. Oh, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. No surprise there. Chase Young wrecks that play with a sack. Now that was a passer's nightmare. The front door totally shut down by the defense. So he kept going backwards, hoping to find another avenue of escape. It didn't exist. Here's the Jets punter now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. Taking a couple yards shy of midfield. They call that a punt of 38 yards officially. And Washington will have a short field here as they take over first and 10. The Washington offense set to take over. Now, they're about to come up on drive number four, but so far, just two field goals on drives one through three. Wondering if the head coach has talked with his offense coordinator and said, look, let's, let's go ahead and press this a little bit. I'm giving you four downs on just about every occasion to try and get this offense kick-started and have it culminate in touchdowns. You know, maybe someday they'll press it a little bit. This might be the case. 
A handoff for Gibson. And he'll wind up getting this to the 32. A play that started at the 16, and that's how many yards they get. First down. That's pretty much meat and potatoes right there, wasn't it? Just go right at them and let your big horse charge up the middle. Not too fancy there, was it? Nothing fancy at all challenging that defense. And on that go around, the offense won the challenge. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Now a first carry here for Robinson. They find some open field here. And he's in. Touchdown, Commanders. 32 yards for Brian Robinson, Jr. And the Commanders are able to strike quickly to add on to their lead. So how about that for your first carry of the game? Not bad. How about that and not bad at all? I think you earned himself a little bit more work, partner, because that's what you want from your number two or your number three running backs. You want them to come in with the fresh legs, give your team a little jolt, and he did it right there. Best way to lobby for more playing time? Have runs like that. Extra point by Sly is up and good, and the lead now stands at 13. So two plays on that scoring drive. That's how they drew it up. And the long run into the end zone, and what a run it was. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And this will be a touchback. Barrios deciding not to bring it out. And New York set to take the field. Still in the first half, but this offense has struggled. Haven't really been able to get anything going, not only in the points category, but in the yards category. Let's see if they can do better here on this drive. They'll start on the ground here on first down. And he is going to lose yardage here. But not many guys who can blow up plays like Chase Young. He did it again there. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football. But that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result. Negative yardage. Well, the first play of the drive lost four. Now they'll look to move it forward here on second and 14. White. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. Another incompletion there. That's five in a row now to start this game. He's got to take a deep breath now, step back, shake it off a little bit, trust his offensive line, and hope that his play caller dials up something that can give him a completion and get him going. The Jets on third down, 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This is third and 14. And he cannot avoid the pressure as the Washington pass rush gets home. The pressure from multiple guys there as they bury him for a big nine-yard loss. Well, you're already up a couple of scores here in the first half defensively, and Charles, they just seem to be playing really free on that side of the football. I love the observation because with that type of a lead, they feel like they can take a few more chances and be even more aggressive, and it's been paying off for them so far this game. Here's Braden Mann now, standing about a yard deep in his own end zone. And a 
fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. 37 yards on the punt with no return. And they will take over first and 10. Here comes the commander's offense back onto the field. The offense running out, and they are charged up, ready to go after reaching the end zone on their last drive. And normally I'd warn against getting complacent just because they scored the last time out. But I don't think there's any worries with this group right now. This is a hungry group, and they want to keep building off of their last drive. Now they just want the officials to hurry up and place the ball so they can snap it and get back to work. Here's Gibson to start the drive. And nowhere to run on the interior of that defensive line. He'll get back only to the line of scrimmage. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Early down stuff to put this offense in a precarious position. We know that securing the point of attack, especially against the big body guys in the middle of this day, has got to be priority one. Wentz to throw on second down. Got this complete to Jahan Dodson. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. They should put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. This is third and one. Very likely four down territory, even if they don't get it, though. Working from the gun, Wentz. And Thomas has it. And they're going to get this down near the 35-yard line. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. On play action, it's Wentz. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far at second down. But in tapping those toes, he tried to get both in bounds. He could not do it, though. In tap dance parlance, could not complete the shuffle. All right, needed to get that shuffle down with both feet, not just one. Is that what they say? There it is. You know, put a little sand down on the stage. I'll take your word for it, my man. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. That's a staple of this offense. Drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's only able to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Yeah, come to the line, needing only two yards to gain the first here. Wentz looking to throw on third and two. Completes it to Samuel. And he'll be marked down right at the 15-yard line. But things definitely going to be right here the first time. Any down, any down, even third down, no problem. They get a connection there and pick up a fresh set of downs, continuing to move the ball. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Into the red zone, Wentz. Thomas has got it, complete. And he'll be out of bounds, taking it just shy of the 10 at the 11 of the 12. The result, only four yards there on the play. And that's going to bring up second down. And Brandon, as you know, sometimes it's a lot tougher to run with these tight ends nowadays in the NFL. They're just bigger wide receivers. He lined up on the left side of the formation, ran a drag route across the field, and tried to work his way open. He was able to make the catch, but the defenders were there. Couldn't do a whole lot with it afterwards. Seven yards on the pickup there, and now they'll have it first and goal. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped have a guy who could turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Gibson 
is into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. And nothing special there. They show they were going to run the football. They ran it. They got it in. Like old-time football, right? Hey, this is exactly what we're going to do. Straight ahead power, and they got it done. Now Joey Sly for the point after. And that one pushes the lead up to an even 20. So that drive consumes nine plays all told. And it results in a four-yard touchdown run. Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. Taking it about the one. And he will be brought down here inside the 20. Good coverage as he's dropped at the 17. The New York set to take the field. They're still in search of an initial first down as they come up here first and 10. On first and ten, it's Hall. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back down and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run, but the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. Second and six. Now White. This pass out wide to Hall. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And that'll bring us to a third and four. Now you've got to hustle your guys to the line and get them set. Now White. There's Hall bringing in another one. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. Give him six yards, and they do convert on third. That's a big conversion there on third down because they did not want to give the ball up here late in the half. They'd love to take the clock all the way down and score. This will definitely help the cause. On first and 10, White. That's brought in by Davis over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Two first downs have him up to the 41 now for first and 10. They'll look to throw again. That's complete. It's Elijah Moore. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half. The play fake. Now White. Just keeping the play alive. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. And I think it's high time to get him some passes that he's comfortable with. Some easy throws, some completions. He's not even hitting to 50% thus far. Well, certainly that has played a big role into why they are trailing right now. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down.
from the shotgun. Here's White. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, this first half has not gone according to plan so far, offensively or even defensively for that matter. They could use a big-time spark somewhere, but it's not going to come on this drive as they have to punt this one away. Out now is the punter, Braden Mann. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. And that ball is going to angle out at the three-yard line. A beauty. Now, if you're a fan of punting, this game's for you. He's been out there quite a bit. That one may be his best yet. Yeah, he certainly got his leg loose by now. It kind of reminds me of my college football coach, John Majors. He loved the punting game because he liked the positioning, the field position, and he loved to play defense. They'll start this drive out on the ground. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. The linebacker, C.J. Mosley, in on the stop. And that's frustrating for a defense because they've got him pinned down deep. And on the first play, they give up a run that keeps an offense on schedule. Yeah, because three to four yards, that's all you're looking for right there, right? That's absolutely perfect, really, as a play call. You get three to four yards on first down. That's what they talk about to us all the time, about being ahead of the chains or on target. And now look at this, big game, but a fumble. And it's scooped up by the Jets. But they will not be able to capitalize as time has run out here on the first half of play. So we reach halftime in what's been a fairly one-sided game so far. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, BG, thanks very much. And welcome one and all to our beautiful new downtown Orlando studios for this EA Sports Halftime Report. Meanwhile, for the Jets, they did not have quite the same amount of success in the passing game that their counterparts did as you get a look at the numbers there. Okay, Coach, thanks as always to you and the gang in Orlando as we welcome everyone back in for quarter number three. The Jets going to get the football first, and they trail as well as we get back underway in this second half. Berrios going to bring this out of the end zone. And the Jets head out on offense here to start this third quarter. And you have to think, Charles, down three scores already. They need to play an almost perfect second half to have a solid chance. And that absolutely starts with finding some way to put together a touchdown drive here. They need to be smart fast, efficient, get the ball into the end zone and do it again multiple times in order to have a chance to win this game. Second half starts with a run by Hall. Puts it on the carpet, it's out. Free fall the ball Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people are on base in scoring position. One guy doesn't get them home. The next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Off play action, here's White. Oh, this is going to be caught along the sidelines. Probably shouldn't have been caught. He's going to lose yardage there. 
And we get a stoppage because, as you can see, a member of the commanders in some obvious discomfort. We'll get an update when we return to MetLife Stadium. Now second and 11 from the 32. On second down, a run with Hall. Dancing away at the 35. Well, another modest gain there on that one. And I think, Charles, you can probably pin part of the deficit on a failure on their part to really get this ground game established. Yeah, they've really struggled to be multidimensional in this one, haven't they, partner? Because they have to be extremely one-dimensional now if they hope to get back into this game. Got to do it by throwing the football and hope to have success through the air. Here's White on third down. And that is incomplete. Well, this is just a continuation of what we saw in the first half. So much for the fresh start to begin the third quarter. Still off target throws, no rhythm throwing the football, and obviously no touchdown scored in this game. Here's the Jets punter now as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. Fair catch called. It's taken in right at the 20-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And that will come the offense as they take over. Wentz bringing the Commanders up for first and 10 at their own 21. From the gun, it's Wentz. Flush to his right. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Holding offense. Oh, why are we doing this? So that one a hold right guard. And you understand why offensive and defensive linemen probably go to martial arts schools and work on their hands so often because that could be the make or break difference on a play. This time he had to grab a jersey in order to make the play happen. Got caught for the penalty. They're backed up here with a first and 20 now after the holding penalty. Throwing now is Wentz. That's going to be caught by Samuel. And way up past the 35 before he's taken down. The extra effort after the catch makes it good for a gain of 26 and also a first down. This is just more of the same. This defense has had no answer on a lot of these throws. They've let these receivers run wild. And here's another completion for good yardage. One play has him to the 37 here for first and 10. And here's a give to Gibson. And he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You go right back to him and hope he explodes. Or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. From the 41, Wentz. And looking for McLaurin, but this is intercepted. Picked off by D.J. Reed. And the Commanders are going to take possession of the football. So cancel the interception, pass interference. And you know what else gets canceled? The return yardage. Makes the play, but now it's all for naught. After the penalty, a fresh set of downs. It's first and ten. Now Gibson, and nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. That play reminded me a lot of a former teammate of mine. We used to call him the trash man. His ability to sit through traffic and make plays was uncanny. And that's exactly what you want from your Mike linebacker. From midfield, here's Wentz. 
And incomplete. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Throwing his wins. And a throw there, going to be incomplete. Looked like he had a couple of different options as far as who to throw to on that play. And who am I to say this, but I'm not sure he made the right decision. Well, the window of opportunity is always going to be small in the NFL. That's why those quarterbacks who make quick decisions and have quick releases have the most success in this league. Here's Tressway now. He'll boot it away from about his 35. And he'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And they'll play keep away from the returner as this one will be marked out of bounds at the 13-yard line. Pretty good spot. And now out come the Jets. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. On first down, it's White. They're able to complete this one to Tyler Conklin. They'll give him four yards there, and it's second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Coming up on a second and six. White looks to throw. They'll set up the screen for Hall. And he's got some space here. And up to the 35 before they're able to knock him down. A jet first down, 18 big yards that time. Well, they've certainly had their share of troubles running the football in this one, but this play is almost an extension of the running game right here. They set up the screen, let him work out in space on the perimeter, and he turns it into a big pickup. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Here's White. He completes that to Garrett Wilson. And they're going to get this up to midfield. But whenever you call and run the hitch route, a lot of times that ball's got to be in the air before the receiver even turns around. That's a result of throwing it so many times in practice. It's really a timing route. Make sure that ball's out of your hands. And oftentimes, the receiver turns around, and there's the ball. Nice completion there. Nothing in that first half. Nothing on the last drive. But they're moving now with a first and 10. Paul ought to give up the middle. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. They give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional. In the battle of game plans, theirs has been superior. From the 45 on second down, White, and that'll be off the mark, too far out in front, and it's incomplete. Another attempt, another incompletion, and when I look at the scoreboard and where we are in this game, it comes to mind that they have to start getting the ball in the hands of their playmakers. Throw it to the guys that maybe can take a short pass and turn it into a long gain or make people miss downfield. They've got to have points, and the guys who can put the ball in the end zone, they're the ones that need to touch the ball. He has a man. It's complete to Wilson. And he is going to have a Jets first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. But look what we have here. A sustained drive. And that was certainly a wall in the first half. They really struggled to try and move the football. But right now, they certainly seem to have the formula working. Let's see if they can keep it up. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move, first and 10. 
White. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. On the draw, it's Hall. And not much. Maybe a yard down to the 23. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Play number nine on the drive coming up, and they need nine yards on third down. To throw, White. And incomplete on the deep ball. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field, though, he felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was not good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. So here's Greg Zerline now as he'll try for the field goal. From the right hash, this from an even 40 yards out. Zerline's kick is up and through. And that will move the deficit from 20 down to 17. So the three points there in CD, that helps him inch a bit closer. Yeah, partner, when you're losing, any points you see go on the board in your favor, you're happy to take them. Taking in at the three. And good coverage there on special teams as they'll get him down shy of the 20. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And Charles, a very uninspired effort the last time we saw them out there was a quick three and out, then they punted the football. Yeah, and you never want to get stopped so soundly during a series, but what would be even worse now is letting it happen again right here. They've got to get going. Wentz bringing the Commanders up for first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Working from the gun, Wentz. Open man is Samuel, complete. A good gain of nine before he's brought down at the 28. On second down, a run with Gibson. And he'll get to the 29-yard line, brought down there. Able to get the one yard he needed, but nothing more. Second and one is often an invitation to take the big shot downfield. I bet the offensive lineman said, are you kidding? We just get on our backs, and let's go get the first down. They love being physical. On first down, right back to Gibson. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Well, sometimes as a running back, you've got to be able to improvise when the hole's not where you expect it to be. But in this case, there wasn't any improvisation that he could do that was going to work. Kind of like if you're trying to be a comedian on open mic night at the improv, and you run into a tough crowd. Play action. Now wins. Looking sideline, incomplete. Let's face this down, can be okay. Might have had a better option instead of throwing the football in the double cover. He was blanking it. I was surprised that he went his direction. Yeah, should have thought maybe about the check down. Take the completion, keep moving. So the failure to connect on second down, that leaves him staring up here at a third and eight. Wentz now to throw.
He's got a man complete. Now he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. That'll put him at 77 yards receiving for the ball game. It's a first down. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's going to end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. So the big play changes the complexion of things. Here's first and 10 just outside the 30. Back to the ground with Gibson. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple and that's it. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive. And once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. To throw, it's Wentz. That's into the hands of his tight end, Bates. And he'll be taken down at about the 22-yard line. A gain of nine yards. First down for Commander. And they will not have time to get another play in here as time has run out on this third quarter. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and ten. And they'll run here with Gibson. And he's got four down inside the 20 to the 18. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it. Thank you. To throw on second and six, Wentz. That one is slant to McLaurin. And the Commanders are going to have a first and goal coming up as the tackle made at the three-yard line. The passing game continues to be their friend, even with a stable lead here in the fourth, Charles. They're going back to that well. Yeah, with their overall philosophy, you know that they trust their quarterback. He's been able to throw it well. They continue to throw these safe passes. Who can blame them? They'll run with Gibson. Only a yard that time, second and goal. Good work there, holding them out on first down, and this is going to be a battle down here on the goal line. Can they hold their ground for two, maybe even three more plays? From the two now, second and goal. Wentz going to throw. Looking end zone, but it's incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss it? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. They'll try to run with Gibson. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. Antonio Gibson with his second touchdown of the afternoon as his guys are able to push that lead out a bit further. And they would not be denied on the ground, powering it in just one play after they got stopped short. And how about how many tight ends were on the field? Because in today's NFL, we think of the tight end more as a pass catcher. But this group, they tell them you've got to be able to run block to stay on this team. And they committed to it and got it done right there. Slide for the PAT. And the lead is now 24. That one in the books as a 12-play drive. And it's culminated by a two-yard touchdown run.
Joey Sly now to kick off after the touchdown. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. Here's the Jet offense now. They head out to take over. Well, it's been a struggle so far for this offense, Charles. It's not only that they haven't been able to put the points up, but really stringing yards together has been a real issue for them in this one. I'm so glad you brought up the yardage because I was thinking to myself, we've seen a lot of NFL games, and we've seen our share of lopsided contests, but in almost all of them, both offenses have put up at least 200 yards in a game, but not in this one. This has been a display of offense that, frankly, I think the two of us have watched from behind our hands, trying to spread our fingers wide enough to actually see the result. Well, it just seems like all game long, there hasn't been a lot of sync quarterback to wide receiver on this side of the football. They haven't been on the same page, quarterback and receivers. Heck, they haven't been on the same grease board when you draw plays up. They haven't been on the same surface tablet that you look at on the sidelines. Nothing's worked for them. They've got to find a way to start matching each other's movements. No gain on that one as it brings up a third and ten. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is, he takes care of the ball well for them, so they'll keep handing it to him. This pass out wide to Hall. And he's able to get this off to his 30 before he's out of bounds. Five yards, not enough. And it'll be fourth down. We can make this one pretty simple. Locked up all of his progressions downfield, forced to get it to his running back. But how about the way they ran to the football and knocked him down to force a fourth down? As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. He finds Wilson, and he is going to have a Jets first down as they manage to convert, and that'll keep the drive alive. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout. And all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Another pass attempt, another incompletion. You figure defensively, you're in the fourth quarter here. You've held the team under 100 yards passing. You've done your job. Especially in today's NFL, which is truly a pass-first league. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Now White. Got a man. And now look at this. Big game, but a fumble. And it's Washington that scoops it up. And with that kind of a deficit, you can't afford to make any kind of mistakes. But it's been pretty symptomatic of what we've seen all game with them, isn't it? Down, say, down this big in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you'd quarter. say an afternoon to forget, absolutely. Out comes Washington's offense as they get set to take over here. And they have to be feeling pretty good. Comfortable fourth quarter lead as they take over following the fumble recovery. On first and ten, it's Gibson. And he's able to get this up just shy of the 15. 68 yards rushing for him now with a couple of touchdown runs to boot. Partner, I think that play echoed a short yardage run. I know they're backed up against their own goal line, but when they stack the defensive line like that, if you find any type of a crease, you're up to the third level before you know it. So still backed up, but the situation not as dire now. First and 10 at the 14. Gibson again. 
And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive game. Just keep that clock ticking. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. Now we've got whistles here before the snap, and I believe this is going to be on Washington. Well, so line's been great. They've got the big lead, so give them a pass there, I guess. Yeah, I would think so, because if we are grading them on their performance in this game, a lot of pluses Still in their boxes down. so far. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. Now wins. And the most curious way there to burn some clock. That was wild. And at the end of all that, it winds up a safety. At this point, I think it's a surprise when he isn't close to being sacked on a passing down. The amount of times he's hit the deck today, I think a lot of us are reading safety before they even took the snap. Simply a merciless pass rush every step of the game. And that rush earns a crowning achievement there. Here's Barrios. New York's offense back out there and set to go. But we said it at halftime that they would need a nearly perfect second half to erase that deficit that they were facing, CD. But unfortunately, the second half has pretty much been a carbon copy of the first. Yeah, that early lead was almost insurmountable the way their opponent was playing. And partner, they do have some good news, though. This one is getting close to being over, and they can try and hit the reset button starting tomorrow. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Following the fumble recovery, White. And it's incomplete. At this point, down big, you'd have to imagine this defense are just going to sit back, blanket the field as best they can. Yeah, this is actually the easy part of the game for them because, just as you noted, they can sit back, keep everything in front of them. But they've blanketed the field the entire game using a variety of coverages. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Out of the gun, they run it with Hall. And he'll be upended at the 33 following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to run. The best runs for the top running back. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away, and they've done that pretty successfully. And the Washington pressure gets to him, and he will go down. Montez Sweat, the man that time to fight in and drop him. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Got to try it here. He's back to throw. Uncorks one for Davis. And too much juice. It'll be out of bounds. Incomplete. The Jets try it, but the fourth down play doesn't work. And Washington will take control of the football in great field position. Well, at this stage of the game in the second half, down three scores, I guess they felt like they needed to push. And let's face it, with this deficit, if they give up another score here after they didn't get it, does it really matter? Right. It really doesn't. They had to go and try and make something happen if they had any chance of winning this game. A give up the middle to Gibson. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Well, that's not a run that's going to make any of the highlight tapes, but they've been moving it well all game on the ground. This is another one that keeps them moving forward. Second and eight. Here's Wentz to throw. 
throw right side complete to Dotson. And he's going to be taken down right at the 10-yard line. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. So not quite a first and goal. It's first and 10 from the 10. Now Wentz. Flushed out right. So they hit pay dirt, but don't count it yet. There's laundry on the field. We'll see what the penalty flag is about. Holding offense. So erase the red zone score. They'll have to dial that one up again. And you know how difficult it is to strike in the red zone because things are a little bit more condensed. You got to go back to their play chart and see if they can dial up another one. So following the hold, they're in a bit of a hole here with a first and 20. Wentz. To the sideline, and wow, what a catch there. He doesn't get a lot, but he was able to get the feet down complete. Give him a gain of five on the completion, and it's second down. Partner took a while for him to lock onto a receiver, and he finally found his man coming left to right across the formation. But by the time he got the ball to him, not much of a chance to turn up field and make anything out of it. Looking to throw again on second down. Wentz. Going to throw right side here, complete. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. So five yards here, five on the play. And that brings up third and a full 10 yards. Now right where this set of downs started, they need a full 10 here to pick up the first down and move the chains. Now Wentz on third down. They'll set up the screen for Gibson. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. It'll be a loss of six yards on the play, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. The whole idea of the screen pass is to fool the defense in a big way and create a big play. They weren't fooled. Not one second, not one bit. How about them figuring it out, diagnosing it, and spilling it for lost yardage? So it's Washington with the football here as we welcome you back. They've got a fourth down here in a game that looks to have been decided already. Wins to the sideline on fourth down. Joey Sly is out there now for the Washington field goal. From the right hash, this from 33. Sly able to put this one through, and that will extend their lead even further. Well, ultimately, not really sure that they're going to need those three points, but... They'll take the three, and they pad that lead. Yeah, this one's already wrapped up, but you and I both know if you're an offensive coordinator, you never let up on the gas unless the head coach tells you to do so. And maybe you've actually clicked him off in your headset so that you can keep calling plays and trying to add to this lead. After the main field goal, here's Sly to kick this one away. And this will be a touchback. Berrios deciding not to bring it out. And New York set to take the field. Well, CD, it's all window dressing at this point. I mean, the best they can do is end the game with a nice drive to maybe build some momentum to move forward into their next contest. Yeah, and with how lopsided this game has been, even one score, might not do a lot of cosmetic good on the scoreboard, partner, because it's just about looking forward at this point. Get a touchdown here. Give yourself some positive momentum and reps to focus on when you get back to practice in the next couple of days. Now White with a first down throw. He'll get this one complete to Davis. And he's taken down but able to slip across the 35. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there, it's going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding probably his agent as he thinks about angling for a new contract. 
On first and 10, White. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. If you're running out route, it's likely you end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it, the benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. Throwing again on second down. White, it's caught by Davis. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. I always laugh when people say, what's the toughest route to defend? And I'm like, any of them, especially if it's a good receiver, that makes things very difficult. But when you're running a drag route, something short, shallow, going through defenders, using guys almost as, as screens in order to get open, that makes things tougher, guys trying to get to the football. Open man here is Conklin. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. To throw again on second down. White looking middle, and it's incomplete. Uh, defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game, and that was a big talk both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them holding them under 200 today. He's got a man. That's cool. Left side that's a first down and then some, a 32-yard pickup. But defensively, I know they have the comfortable lead here in the fourth, but they do not want to give up big plays like that. They want to finish strong. So oftentimes in this situation, you tighten up underneath in your coverage and you bring your safeties back. They can pick up anything that leaks through. But in the meantime, upfield, you're making plays on the football. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. That's brought in by Davis over the middle. The Jets are going to use the first of their timeouts as they get it with just 19 seconds left on the clock. From the six now on second and three. Here's White. Toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. I think this is what this game's become now. It just go deep, see if we can get something to go our way. Yeah, not the most creative or most inventive play call there, but not much has worked for them throughout this game. They're almost at a loss about what to dial up. Here comes play number nine now as they come up on a third and three. Now White. And it's caught. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. And we've got a timeout. Nine seconds remaining. to throw white and this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it his back has been a dependable safety valve all game so he went back to him when his first read was covered just unable to connect so the play results in no gain second and goal and they will try again from the two yard line One final shot. They'll look to throw. The Jets going to go ahead and use their final timeout. And as the two teams talk it over on their respective sidelines, we take a break. This defense has not surrendered a touchdown yet. You better believe they're determined not to here on third and goal. White. 
And this is going to be caught. So it affects the final score, not the outcome, but it is a late touchdown here on the game's final play. The extra point is good, but it only impacts the final score as this game comes to a close. Or on the one side, if you try to take away something positive from this game, they play to the final whistle, getting the touchdown there on the last play. But still, all for naught, really. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say give them points for positivity. I like that. That part is good. But I often wonder, when the game is settled and the clock is run out, do we really need to kick the extra point? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's silly. It's it, silly. It doesn't make any sense to me. I know that people have explained before, well, you got to play it all the way through. Come on. This thing was done. 